Hi. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Kate. Um, I'm an occupational therapist. Thanks, Jane, for the introduction. Um, I just wanted to say one thing. Sorry, I did my master's degree in occupational therapy, but I did get to do a research project. And my research project was based on a sexual device manual for people with disabilities. So I'm not a sex health clinician or an expert. In fact, I imagine that a lot of you in the crowd are more expert at this topic than I am. But I'm here to talk about the conversation, uh, talk about sexual health, open the conversation, and just explore some of the ideas tonight. So this is, um, this is gonna be hopefully fun, and there'll be some images that you might have not thought you were coming to see tonight, but um, just take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> so my manual, um, I've got a few copies here. You can take them if you wanna come up later on. Please come up, take a manual. This manual was created, like I said, for persons with disabilities. We focused on persons with quadriplegia and paraplegia. But I want to start, so why am I here? So why is it important to talk about sexual health? Well, there's lots of reasons, but first let's just say we need to talk about it. We need to discuss how the physical changes can affect sexuality after we've been talking about men's health especially. Um, identify basic interventions, skills, devices to renegotiate your sexuality. And my main goal here is also to provide information and resources. So if I spark any interest tonight, I know lots of people who are really good at talking about this and, and you can call them up, you can meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. I have some contacts, so I have lots of information. If, if you want more information, I can give it to you. Okay, so let's talk about sex. So as an occupational therapist, we actually define sexual expression as an activity of daily living. So that puts it in the same realm as eating, dressing, grooming. It's really something that's an everyday activity, and it's something that people have done, are doing, or want to do. This is something that we're all doing, and, but we don't like to talk about it. It's hard to talk about. <laughs> But it's important to talk about, and professionals have to talk about this with their clients. And when we were creating this manual, we actually interviewed clients who'd been through the healthcare system, and they'd been through an acute hospital and then into a rehab hospital. And we asked them, has anyone asked you about your sex life or your sexual health? And the vast majority of the clients said no. No one had asked them about this, and they wanted to be asked about it. And so it was a big highlight to us that the clinicians are very uncomfortable bringing this up, and, and clients want to know, they want to talk about it, they want to ask questions. So we have a responsibility as healthcare providers to ask and to provide information, and if we don't have the answers, we at least need to direct them in the right, in the right place. So this is why we, we developed the manual, so the clinicians could give the manual to the client and walk away, if, even if they're very uncomfortable. So we did some literature review for this manual, and one of the biggest studies that we, we looked at, and it was quite interesting, was an, a study done by Anderson in 2004, and he surveyed hundreds of individuals with spinal cord injury um, to assess what priorities would most impact their quality of life. So for persons with quadriplegia, which is no arm and hand function, and for persons with paraplegia was no, sorry, arm and leg function, and for persons with paraplegia is no leg function, just to clarify, so for persons with quadriplegia, regaining arm and hand function was their number one priority, but their second priority was sexual function. And with, for persons with paraplegia, I have to say this study was done on males between the ages of 19 and 40, so that might have changed the result slightly, but it was very interesting in this study because they asked the, the persons with, with paraplegia, the, the males, if they could walk again or have sex again, what would they choose? And in actual fact, they said have sex again over walking. So this, this blew our mind. This, this was a really big, um, a big study, and it was showing how important sex is to everyone, and especially persons who, with disability. So what is sexuality? Let's just talk about it in the broadest sense. Sexuality encompasses all the feelings and attitudes and behaviors that contribute to our sense of self. It really depends upon your age and your life experience. Um, it has lots of social, psychological dimensions, and it crosses the, the lifespan of the human experience. And the reason why I think this is important to talk about is that sexuality is 
on a continuum over the lifespan. It changes. I'm pretty sure if I asked you what you thought sexual health was or sex in your 20s compared to your 60s, I'm pretty sure your answer would be quite different. So I think it's, it's good to recognize that it's fluid. It changes. Sexuality isn't static. It's not black and white. It's also not simple. It's not a simple concept. Um, so we, when we think about sexuality and we think about our own sense of, of sexuality, there's a lot of myths out there that influence our sense of self. And I want to talk about some, because I know all of you have heard at least one of these. So um, sex is for young people. Good sex requires orgasm. Sex education is for disease prevention only. Uh, sex should be spontaneous, no planning, no talking. It's always go time. Uh, sex means intercourse. Men should always initiate. Uh, people with health challenges have no interest in sex. And finally, sex, sexual aids are perverted, which makes me a really big pervert because I got a lot of them up here. But these are not mine. <laughs> these are not mine. Uh, these are donated actually from the GF Strong uh, sexual health clinicians. And they're used um, all over BC. They take them with them on a road show. They call it their sex, sex uh, device road show. And they lent it to me tonight. So um, it is a big deal to get to have all these different devices here. So um, yeah, some of the myths, and these are, these are going to influence um, our sense of, of, of sexuality and, and our sense of self. And so this one I'm going to leave up to you to decide whether you think it's a myth or reality, but this is, this is, I thought this was kind of funny. <laughs> so, so factors that can affect our sexual health are things like sexual, our sexual self-esteem, libido, erections, sexual drive, ejaculation sensory changes, orgasm, limited flexibility for positioning and for upper, upper extremity strength or lower extremity strength. And I've got the bumper here. This is called love bumper, this red cushion here. And that's particularly good for uh, extra, um, sorry, strength in the lower and upper extremity. I'll get into that later. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm thinking if, if you were diagnosed with, let's say, cancer, prostate cancer, and now you've got catheters and leg bags and ostomies, um, you're probably, probably not feeling very sexy. and You're probably not feeling at the top of your game, right? It's probably not your prime. So you have to find ways to redesign your, sex, your sexual health and your sex life. And um, so when, when you go through something like this, and I I'm, I'm obviously don't have that experience, but... You know, it leads to things such as stigma, isolation, disconnection, and distorted self-views, and those can really impact your life big time. So this, this term, redesign of your sexual life and, and your intimate self, is something that the sexual health clinician um, at GF Strong talks about a lot, this redesign, and, and the idea that we always might have to be redesigning as we, as we change, as we age. Um, it's important to think of that as a concept. And we all know that sexual desire doesn't come as easy as sort of lighting a candle, turning on the berry white, you know, boom, boom, you know, it does not always that easy, right? There's, there's a lot of other factors, and we all know this. If you're tired, your mood, you know, your body image, um, the impacts of all these myths that we hear, uh, the stress, sexual payback, lack of knowledge and confidence, and we don't talk about it as society. Health professionals are not even asking you these questions, so you, it's normal that it would be, how would you get your desire going if you're not even talking about it, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the facilitators for sexual play. And again, I'm not a sexual health clinician. I'm not an expert, but I, I'm sure you know more than I do. <laughs> and so, but I'm here to talk about what I've read and seen out there. So the first thing that always comes up in the literature is talking about sex with your partner. So practicing the words, um, be clear and honest and open about your desires, your likes, your dislikes. Pay attention to your partner's responses. Um, take your partner's feelings into consideration, ask questions, acknowledge your other parts. So this takes practice. This takes patience. This takes practice. This doesn't come easily. And maybe it does for some of you, and I hope it does. But for others, we have to work harder at doing this. So this is a really important one. The next one I want to talk about are the devices. So the, this is actually right out of the manual. Um, the reason why I like this page is there's a lot of creativity that goes into these, the names of these toys. They try to make it fun, lighthearted. So we've got, yeah, we've got Flashlight, we've got Tim's Bit, we've got the Love Bumpers, we've got the Intimate Rider. I've got the Love Bumpers, I've got the Intimate Rider. I actually have the Flashlight, um, I have Tim's Bit, I have quite a few, but it's just fun, right? Fun names to make, to make you feel more open and creative and I don't know, I like it, I like this. <laughs> um, most of us, I, I would hope, have heard or seen of a vibrator. They come in all different shapes and sizes and if you haven't, definitely check it out. 
they're, they're so easy to find. Um, I actually looked while I was doing this, this, this presentation, I looked to see if there was a sex shop on the coast, and there isn't. <laughs> and I, I was shocked, someone's gonna have a good business if they take that up, I feel like. But, but there is a lot of them in Vancouver. So if you, if you are interested in any of these products, I also have a list here on the table of all where you can find them and get them online. But a lot of the sex shops in Vancouver have these. The other is the pelvic harness and prosthetic penis. And the reason why I put this one up is I heard from a sexual health clinician a story about a client who was diagnosed with prostate cancer, had surgery, and was told he would have a difficult time having erections. Um, and that did happen after the surgery. He did have a difficult time. So he, he went to the sexual health clinician at the time, and, and, and him and his wife really missed the closeness of, of intercourse. And so he went and said, look, I'm kind of a meat and potatoes kind of guy in bed. Like, I don't really want to experiment. It doesn't interest me. And she, you know, she had a big talk with him, and she talked about this concept of redesign and, and being open and creative. And actually, this is the story I heard. that he, So he tried this with his wife. And apparently they're both extremely satisfied with this product and it changed their life. And he was very surprised because he never thought he would be able to go there, but he did and it, it worked out for him and it worked out for his wife. And so I think that's pretty neat, kind of a good story. Um, the tongue vibrator, you have to watch your teeth on this product, as you can see. That's a vibrator, it's a metal vibrator that goes on your tongue. It was, it was developed for persons with quadriplegia, so they could stimulate someone else, but um, it's actually popular with everyone. It's a very popular product, it's just dangerous for your teeth. So you got, <laughs> unfortunately I don't have that one here, but, but I know where you can find one. <laughs> um, the erection enhancer drugs, you, I'm sure you've heard of this, Viagra, Cialis, talk to your doctor, but these are products out there, they, they do work. Even alcohol can affect erections, so this, these are good products. I actually, I lived with a, a guy, a 27-year-old guy, very fit, very active, and I one day opened the wrong drawer, and it was his drawer, and he had Viagra in there, and I thought, there's no way, there's no way. And I asked him, why do you have this, this in here? And he said, well, on the big drinking nights, he, and I'm not recommending, but he said that he takes it, and it works like a charm. So men across the lifespan are using this drug if they're used, you know, for different reasons. So I thought that was kind of funny. It was good. Um, another one, this again, like the sexual health clinicians are really good about going through how the vacuum pump works and, and you know, taking you through those steps. This is another one that they recommend people use. Um, the elater is something that apparently that's quite popular. Um, it doesn't hurt the partner, um, but you can see how it works there. I don't need to describe it, I hope. You can just see the picture. Um, and then, of course, our positioning products. And this is where, as an occupational therapist, I feel some level of confidence talking about because we are trained with ergonomics, seating, transferring. So I can help with this one tonight. This is somewhere, so an area I can help you with. And um, we have, like I said, we have a few bumpers here, but this can be as simple as low back pain, um, neck pain. It can really make a difference. Or if you have a difficult time holding your legs up, little things like that, but it can really help. Um, we have the intimate rider, like I talked about, and I'll sh I, I want, kind of want to show you how it moves. Sorry. So I have the dolls here, but <laughs> unless does someone want to volunteer, <laughs> I, I, I need volunteers. So, so let's say like this, and then oops, okay, they might not want to sit, but like this, okay, he's there, and then this just moves. So you don't have to have any lower body. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Lower body strength. It just moved. Do you see? Okay. So this just was. A... I need a volunteer. I can't do <laughs> Nobody's jumping up. Are you be sit I thought you were tired of sitting. You'd be jumping up and rushing up here. <laughs> okay. Well, oh shoot. Oh sorry. Now I've really messed up. Oh okay. I'm just gonna quickly go. That just got me so flustered and excited. <laughs> Okay, and this one, the swing, I couldn't bring this one, but look how cozy and comfy that looks, and, and, and this can be set up, and uh, it's actually not that hard to set up, they're just big, but lots of people use these, you'd be surprised. <laughs> so that's another option. Um, obviously the lubes and the moisturizers you've heard of, I have some of those up here, and the ticklers, just thinking about redesign, creativity, throw something in there you've never done, you know, you never know. Um, games are obviously really popular. Books, the big one with books, you can order the book to your door, take it to your bedroom, read it, answer your own questions, and you don't have to talk about any, to anyone about it. You don't have to ask questions, no one knows, it's a secret thing. So books are really good, people like books. And they're 
can be more trustworthy than online sources, right? So, okay, so that's it. In summary, I just wanted to say that sexuality and pleasure adds so much to our lives. It adds meaning, it helps the, with the recovery of illness, with physical and mental pain. It increases the sense of connectedness, 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 sorry, I can't say it. Decreases stress and enhances intimacy. So it's Friday night. You've been sitting and listening, and I hope that I've maybe excited you a little bit to go home and have a cozy, fun time. And if not, well, before you do that, come get really inspired and come up here and, and I, we can talk about these toys and you can, try, you can turn them on, but to stay here. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. The, I have these um, clinical connections. I can give you their contacts. I've got some handouts and that's about it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. <laughs>